perhaps lunchtime for you is just one more thing on your to-do list, the never-ending to-do list, and you want to get it crossed off so you can get back to the finish your homeschool day. Or maybe home your lunchtime marks the end of your homeschool day and you are ready to just sit and relax for a bit. But those kids need lunch. But lunchtime doesn't have to be miserable for you or the kids. And that's what I'm going to share today. Um, but before I do, I am participating in a collaboration today with other moms in the homeschool community. So you'll want to check down there for the playlist and go check out what other moms are sharing about homeschool lunches. Now, I will preface this by saying that my kids are on the older side. I have a 15 year old, a 12 year old and an almost 10 year old. So what homeschool lunches look like now is very different than what they used to be. But the tips that I'm sharing are ones that I've been instituting over several years and um, yeah, these aren't just ones that work now. They're ones that have worked in the past as well. So first I'm going to share a couple tips focused on the meals and then on the food itself. And then I'm going to share with um, some tips on making the uh, event of it a little more enjoyable. My first tip is to keep meals simple. Now, there are moms out there who love to do or who enjoy doing a deluxe meal at lunch time. You know, a nice home big main dish and all of that. If you're watching this video, it's probably not you though. <laughs> and if you are like that and you're watching this, fantastic, hats off to you. But if that's not what you're like, don't feel like you should just because you're home. Yes, you're home, but you are also schooling your kids. So take that off the shelf. Now, what else do I do to keep it simple? One, sides. I keep my sides very simple. Sometimes on the weekend, I will make a, some kind of a side dish that reheats really well and let's let the kids eat on that a couple days in the week. Otherwise, the sides are pretzels or chips, usually pretzels because I don't buy chips very often, and then fresh fruit and carrots. That's it. Or fresh fruit and vegetables, usually carrots. <laughs> um, and then if I have yogurt, sometimes I'll throw in some yogurt. That's what we do for sides. I am not going to, I'm not going to cook other things. That's a general rule. Number two, sometimes on the weekends I will make a big batch of something that I know we could eat for a few days. My kids really enjoy chicken tacos, so sometimes I'll make a batch of that and know that maybe one day they'll do tacos or quesadillas, chicken quesadillas. Another day maybe they'll do some kind of a rice bowl type of thing. Um, or I'll make soup. That kind of thing. Something that just reheats really well and specifically if it doesn't get eaten, something that I can freeze. Number two, teach the kids basic kitchen skills. Now this is going to be to depend on your child because of my three, they were all ready for different things at different times. My 12 year old is still often forgetful. He's five steps ahead of what he's doing and he forgets, you know, I'll occasionally forget to turn off the burner or that kind of thing. But my youngest for I guess three years now has been making quesadillas on his own. So it's going to depend on your kid, but think about what they can accomplish and make sure that they're strong in that. And that includes putting their dishes away, cleaning up the table. Um, sometimes I'll have kids vacuum or sweep at the same time. And my third one is if it makes sense for your family, push lunch until later. I have found, we used to always break by 11. We would have an early lunch and then we'd get back to it. But it ended up feeling really rushed to me and I still knew we had a lot of school left to do. Then we pushed it later and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we only have an hour or so left after lunch. Ha ha ha! That made lunchtime so much like, it's like, ah, oh, just a quick refresh and then we're gonna hit it and then we're done. And that really felt mentally good to me. Now, in my ideal world, we would push it to like one and then just be done. But that can't happen because we have to leave the house for medical appointments by 1230 a couple times a week. Um, so 12 o'clock is when we break for lunch and that is just a good amount of time for us. Um, so if it makes sense for you and mentally, 
it feels it would feel good to you think about pushing it until later i don't want my kids to like have this idea that like mom have this memory later <laughs> that mom was just trying to get through lunch like, i want it to be something that they would fondly remember their lunch time so there are five ideas that i have for you one is lunch on the couch now I will say <laughs> this is something we did not do very often at all when my kids were younger. We still don't do it very often, but especially when they were younger, I had to carefully plan that there was not going to be any grape jelly or red sauce or such for these meals. But if we did that, when we do that and we turn on something educational or even semi-educational, um, it's just the kids enjoy it, it's something different, and I enjoy it too because we're all just engaged in a different way. I should say right here, I don't usually sit with my kids at lunchtime. Um, I'm sure that makes some, breaks the rules of some people's ideas of motherhood, but I don't, for breakfast and lunch, I don't sit with my kids. We all sit down for dinner, but not breakfast and lunch. Number two, games. Of course, my kids, just in the past couple of years, have become really into games, and so they spend a lot of lunch times playing games. As a side benefit of them having fun, they also tend to argue a lot less at lunchtime if they're playing games, <laughs> if they're just having other random conversations. Um, number three is to listen to podcasts um, while they eat lunch. It goes along with number four, which is audiobooks. Now, um, especially when they were younger, if I just needed to not hear them talk for a few minutes, I would turn on an audiobook and they would get, you know, into the story and everyone would just eat. And I wouldn't be asked questions and they wouldn't argue and they wouldn't talk incessantly about, about whatever. <laughs> so, um, we used to do that now, less audiobooks, but we do, we'll do some podcasts sometimes. One of their favorites right now is called Shortwave by, um, NPR. And the episodes are kind of five to ten minutes, so we'll usually do a couple of them at lunchtime. And they're really engaging science ones, um, yeah, just super engaging topics. So check that out. Um, and you know, there are millions of, not millions, there are a lot of podcasts out right now, but that's one that my kids really enjoy. And if all else fails, send your kids outside. For whatever reason, my kids, like, they're, it all changes when they go outside to eat lunch. Uh, they don't argue at all. They have, they laugh, and they, I don't know. Something completely changes when they go outside. I don't know if it's just a change in scenery or what. I'll see you over in the next video.